Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and hopefully you're enjoying your Saturday and maybe you've even logged on uh, to the Ludlow Medieval Fair where you would have seen uh, performances by Helen and I um, which was filmed several weeks ago uh, and has just been put online this weekend because generally this weekend we will be involved with the Ludlow Medieval Fair. However, the aim of this video is to talk about what was at the bottom or what was in Ian's mug. Well, it's an interesting story about this mug. Now, this is a replica, like most of the things that we have, that's generally pre-Victorian. And it's a very good replica and it's been very, very well made. And it's a replica of really an 18th century beer tankard sometimes actually referred to as a mug also and you could probably drink tea out of it if you wanted to the only problem is in the 18th century tea was extremely expensive and if you think back to a previous video we spoke about tea bowls in the 18th century which was the general thing that people had the tea in um but mugs were around but like i said mugs are generally used for beer and uh, this beer tankard was commonplace in most pubs, taverns and inns for a very, very long period of time until glassware became cheaper and they were replaced with glass. The typical uh, beer glasses that we uh, drink out of even today, really, may have changed slightly, but uh, it's glass, it's see-through, you can see what's in it, basically. So we asked the question of what is in Ian's mug and we gave you a few ideas for example it's a very old probably an ancient animal uh, and that's referring to the fact that these animals have been around for a very very long time um, and uh, this thing uh, looks up at you and will give you a little bit of a shock well we've had one correct answer uh, and someone actually said is it a toad and you're probably laughing at that at home now, thinking, why would you have a toad at the bottom of a beer tankard? Well, there are two theories behind this, really. We've got um, what is often referred to as the true factual or historical reason for there to be a frog in there. And then we've also got a, a legend type of story a, a folk tale that also goes along with it so we're mentioned both and if you watch our video about soap that's the same with soap as well you've got the historical idea behind where soap comes from even the name soap and then you've also got for example the legend of where soap came from and it's the same with this so the answer is it is in fact a toad now i don't know if you can see that at the bottom there i'll try and tilt it up so you can actually see it and obviously it's not a real toad it's actually one that's been made out of the uh, clay the pottery it's been molded and then it's been attached to the bottom of it now these tankards these uh, beer glasses these beer cups i should say are sometimes known as uh, frog mugs sometimes known as toad mugs and they are collector's items in the 18th and more so in the 19th century. Now, this one's quite a plain one. It's just got a plain uh, glaze on it. However, a lot of these actually had statements on them. There was a vast amount of political statements on these. Sometimes, and I've seen some fantastic ones, you have ships on it and then you have a picture of Lord Nelson. Uh, other ones would have... Uh, a very short fat Napoleon Bonaparte and then behind uh, him would be the Duke of Wellington kicking him up the bottom uh, and then there will be some political slogan on it and this is typical because these are for beers and when you're in a pub uh, pubs are known for gossip pubs are places where there is a lot of political chit chat and even now or shall we say after uh, COVID-19 if you sit in a pub it's surprising everyone's views are being bounced around the wall so they often have these political slogans on now as I mentioned there is often a, a true story or shall we say a historical story behind quirky little things like that and then there's also a legendary one so we'll talk about the historical one first it was said many many years ago late well early 18th century I should say a potter was making 
uh, tankards like this one in Sunderland because we know this story actually starts in Sunderland and what potters often do is once they've made the clay uh, into the cup for example like this one here uh, they often stand them just to dry a little bit because in some cases if the clay is too wet when they get fired it can hurt them it can damage them it can crack them it can shock the mug so what actually happens is they dry them off a little bit air dry them and then kiln fire them after that. And it was said that a potter in Sunderland, as I mentioned, uh, came back to where he had them lay on the floor, possibly the next day, and he found a frog, or some people say toad, it actually jumped into the bottom of the cup and it couldn't get out. It was stuck at the bottom, basically. So it was just there. And the potter saw it in the bottom of the cup. He had a bit of a, 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 bit of a shock and he thought, wouldn't that be funny if we had a clay version in the bottom of a cup and when people drank it they get to the bottom and they get this little shock and that sort of evolved then a bit like frogs amphibians have evolved it sort of evolved in some of these just like this one here it's actually got a small hole in the mouth that actually comes out underneath under his chest basically and the idea is when you get to the last dregs of beer at the bottom or ale or whatever else you're drinking from this uh, it sort of captures a small amount of drink so by the time you've drank the last bit and you're bringing it down because of the movement of bringing it down it sort of spits at you so it gurgles and spits at you so it's shocking and it makes the frog or the toad uh, look quite realistic really it looks like there really is a toad at the bottom and like I said these were collector's items but like I said this is quite plain they were often covered in all sorts of political slogans in a good way of drinking beer before glassware came in so that's really the historical evidence and the interesting thing is they were copied and we don't know how they got down here but they started to be copied by the 1770s uh, really 1750s 1770s by a lot of the potters in not only Worcestershire but also in uh, the area of for example Stoke-on-Trent which is a rival to let's say Royal Worcester Porcelain so they're quite common in shall we call it the Midlands area really and we don't really know the correct journey of where it got from Sunderland to the Midlands but it came here and a lot of potters even in Worcester uh, would have been creating these uh, novelty mugs as we would call them really so that's the uh, answer really to what's in Ian's mug it is in fact a frog and it sits there and it squirts drink at you when you get to the bottom but there is also a legendary story that goes with this and it was said there's two actually the first one is people used to say if you had a fever which is why they're sometimes known as fever mugs as well uh, if you have a fever um, think back to sort of wise women and that sort of thing um, the only way you can get rid of it out of your body is if you're not going to get yourself really, really cold and really, really hot, which is a, a shock way of getting rid of the fever. Then the alternative is if you see something that's shocking, it will take away the fever. So the idea is if you've got someone with a fever, you give them a beer in here. When they get to the bottom, they see the toad or the frog. They're in shock. It spat at them. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's taken away the fever. Doesn't work, by the way, so do not even attempt at this one. Um, there is another theory, another legendary theory that goes with this. And it's really down to the fact that um, they used to say um, in some areas of the country, and I'm not sure how popular it is down here, but in some areas, in the wilds of nowhere, really, um, people got into the habit, and it sounds a bit odd here, of licking a toad. Now, if you Google that or look into that, there's a lot of stories on the internet about this. And some people say, well, in some countries, if you lick a certain toad, it will give you, um, how can I put it really, a buzz. It gives you a high. So people say, well, that's where that comes from as well. And some people will actually tell you that these mugs were designed to stop you from actually licking a real toad instead it's forcing you to see a well a clay version instead really so it's an interesting thing and i always think it's a very strange thing but it's historical it's an historical fact 
but it's a very weird oddity a novelty mug something to drink your beer out of get a shock to get rid of fever have a bit of a laugh at and uh, shall we say to stop people from licking toads which i would advise you against anyway so it's an interesting one so what's in the bottom of ian's tankard very simple ian's mug has a frog at the bottom or a toad whatever you want to call it basically but very popular from the 1750s up to the 19th century so as it is a saturday night after all and hopefully you're all relaxing all i need to say to you really is uh cheers and beware of things at the bottom of the cup stay safe and we'll see you soon bye bye